On the morning of the 17th of, of September 1944, the, the, the whole stream of aircraft flying straight out from England came from this end of the drop zone started dropping all the way along here. They flew in nine abreast, these aircraft, and me being in the 2nd Battalion, we landed quite early in the drop, simply because we had the furthest to go to the air target, which was Arnhem Bridge. We came in, dropping here, and by then, oh, of course, there was scores of men on the ground here. Containers were falling this end of the drop zone, and one went off with a hell of a bang because its parachute didn't open and uh, it was full of mortar bombs actually. And uh, we've, I saw all the aircraft going there, me being number eight, I was near enough the middle of the stick, but the rest of the stick landed further on. But one aircraft, I was perfect day, one aircraft came out of the formation, Dakota, came through right round the drop zone by itself went back in over Arnhem and then came in by itself underneath this stream of aircraft coming along and one man dropped out and I can only assume it was a, a, the last man in the plane would have dropped too far off the drop zone so rather than go back to England he went round he asked the pilot to go round and come in and dropped to keep up with his mates that, that was one particularly outstanding moment of that. We, we came down this, this way, to, there was yellow smoke going up over the uh, rendezvous and we all had to go there, yellow being our battalion colours. Uh, we were in that drop zone, in that uh, rendezvous for what, half an hour, three quarters of an hour and by the time of that was up, there was enough of us there to start off hell for leather for the bridge being loaded down with a heavy Vickers machine gun, it, it was hardly hell for leather for me, I had to <laughs> stagger along in the rear. But uh, that is where we started off and immediately we left this, uh, this rendezvous, we ran smack into a German armoured car and a lorry load of German infantry. We t they didn't know we were there, we didn't know they were there, but our leading platoon recovered quick, which was Lieutenant McDermott's platoon out of A Company. They set up the brand guns and they just, well, we killed and captured everybody that was in the, well, about 30 of them, I suppose it was. And the, that didn't take more than a few minutes because we took them completely by surprise. And we headed then, carried on towards uh, Arnhem as fast as we could. Having left the drop zone, we came down um, like a Sunday afternoon stroll, no opposition. Everybody was laughing, happy, we were going to finish the job off in five minutes, we thought. And uh, coming down the road, of course, the, the, the Dutch people had obviously seen the aircraft going over, dropping at the back of these woods. And uh, they came out on the street bringing their children. We were kissing the children and, and some of the girls as well when we could get near them. And, and uh, everybody was offering us milk. I believe there was some alcohol somewhere, but I never found any of that. I kept going. <laughs> and uh, there were so many people on the road that, in, in fact, we were slowed up by being crowded in with these people. And uh, of course, our main object was to get to that bridge while it was still daylight and while there was no, probably no Germans there. And uh, we did get through the crowd. It, took a bit longer than it ought to have done actually and going along one of these roads, I'm not sure quite which one because everything has been altered, new houses, there, there was a, I remember there was a, what was a petrol station and we dropped a couple of blokes off there simply to guard it so that our jeeps 
rain carriers coming along behind would have somewhere to refuel if they wanted it. Just two of our men stuck there. What happened to them in the end, I don't know. But um, Then we were going hell for leather straight down to the uh, down to the river road. That's what we were looking for. And apparently our carriers did come along, the ones allocated to our battalion. And, and I was very pleased to note that our officers shouted out to us, all right lads, throw your spare ammunition on the carriers, which me carries 750 round, three great big metal boxes hanging on my equipment, as well as I, at that particular time, I'd got a Vickers machine gun across my pack on the back, as well as my own equipment. And I only weighed eight stone five pound myself at the time. This equipment was at least 12 stone. I was so pleased to get rid of this. I could move a bit faster then after the uh, after they'd taken all this equipment off us. Now this is the, the, the scene of the of a notable point on our way into Arnhem. It was a lovely afternoon, people coming out cheering us. We felt great, you know, we're the great conquerors, which we didn't turn out to be anyway in the end. But um, coming here at the old church, which is a very famous landmark in, 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 in the later stages of the battle, in fact. And uh, our progress was along this road with the river on our right and we could see, as we got further along, the, the what was the railway bridge. At, uh, coming along here, this is the place where the Bren gun carriers caught, caught us up, and uh, I was glad to get rid of all the weight I was carrying. And also, a, a friend of mine, who'd come from the Oxford and Bucks with me, in fact, and went through parachute school together, named Billy Gilder, he lived in Saffron Walden. He'd been in the army quite a while on the anti-aircraft guns around, not around London at the time, but he joined the Paris, and uh, Billy had bribed, actually bribed a sergeant with five pound of my money to let him get onto the drop, uh, the, the drop zone, drop the drop list, because he was originally going across the channel with all our kit bags to, and catch us up. But uh, anyway, Billy came. He, he became an officer's batman, especially to come out here. And uh, he then went by on a, on a German captured German motorcycle, his officer riding it, Billy sitting in the, in the sidecar with an MG34 German machine gun. And he spotted me on the side of the road and, hey Steve, he said, it's a piece of cake. I said, it's all right for you, Bill, you're riding. But we carried on up towards the... Uh, what turned out to be Arnhem Bridge in the finish. On our right hand side was this railway bridge which C Company sent a platoon across to it to capture this bridge. But uh, we put smoke bombs down from our two inch mortars to screen them. But as they got to the bridge, just as they were 20 yards short of it, it blew up. And that course at the end of the bridge, we couldn't use it. Our troops came back, but C Company was detached to stay there to hold the bridge to possibly, we didn't know that and, uh, 30 Corps were not going to come up to us that quick. And uh, that was uh, uh, the start of the real fighting that I was involved in on Den Brink. This is the scene of the next action we were involved in. 
There's the railway bridge which we were supposed to take. C Company sent a, a platoon across there. We put smoke bombs down to come give them cover. But just before they got to the bridge, it, it was blown. And so they came back here. And while that was going on, we were stationary along here because there was gunfire up underneath that railway bridge there where the Gronert trains were killed. And we were standing, just standing around here like a Sunday afternoon. And all of a sudden, there was one rifle shot from way up on the high ground up here. And the bullet hit, whacked into one of these trees right opposite here. Sergeant Joy, my platoon sergeant, was standing right next to it. And I always remember him shouting out, what are you going to do now? And, and I was incensed, actually, that I was doing nothing. I put my bayonet on my rifle and I charged up between one or the other of these houses and the, the gardens in the back, thinking I was going to shoot back at whoever fired at us. But uh, some officer or sergeant, maybe, I don't know who it was, came dashing up behind me because Bronco Humphreys, a member of my platoon, had shouted out, there's Morgan going after a medal. Now, now this scene is it, uh, the, the scene of a, tr a real tragedy in our eyes simply because we'd had no casualties until then and having lost the use of the railway bridge there which had been blown up under one of our platoons and we, we came back along here uh, this being the, the way into Arnhem. Now, as we came through here, there was perhaps 70 or 80 men infantry in front of me. Uh, and as we came through here, we spotted the, the bodies of their first two casualties, which was particularly poignant in as much as they were twin brothers, uh, 26 years old, They'd been in the battalion a while, but as I came along on just up this road here, they were led one on top of the other. Most frightening, really, to me, being the first casualties I'd seen in war. And uh, that was the, uh, these two boys were killed by a machine gun fire from an armored car, which was a couple hundred yards away, up that way. And it may well have been, I don't know, I wasn't close enough. It may well have been that some of these bullet holes here was an overshoot from their death. I can't say that for sure, but it seems to me that that is quite likely what happened. This is the scene of the actual battle. On the Monday morning, uh, after we arrived on the Sunday, I was actually in a house where this here, quite close to this bridge, and uh, we heard these tanks rumbling, and we thought, "Hello, oh, Second Corps here, so Second Army Corps, come to help us out." And, but it wasn't. When they got as far as here, we could see that it was German half tracks and lorries with infantry. It was nice to knock the first one in the middle of the road, yeah. and the rest ran into it. And therefore, they became a pilot. Okay pile up of, of German vehicles, 12 or 13 of them. We were giving them hell with piots. I was, uh, I moved down to the, the house at the end there to try and catch the Germans who were running away from their collapsed vehicles, or their wrecked vehicles, and going down that way. And me being having a single shot rifle and being a quite a good shot, I managed to stop one or two of them from going down that road. The battle lasted almost an hour I suppose we were blazing off ammunition like nobody's business hoping that we were going to get a resupply by night with the second army coming up but it didn't happen there, there was a six pounder anti-tank gun just under those trees that was being manned by glider pilots and they caused great execution among the the, 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 uh, the German tanks there and uh, after that we, we all hunkered down in these houses because this area was completely saturated with German mortar fire, particularly from across the river and from positions all around. We, we, we were just showered down, we couldn't even poke our head out the window. But it was in this house here that I was sheltering and I was with a man, our machine guns were in there pointing across the river. 
there was a man there named Cox. He was in the A company. He was a sniper. He got a proper sniper rifle. And uh, he was looking out the window. I was sheltering, cowering beside the, the uh, chimney breast of this house. And an 88 millimeter shell from the other side came straight through the window and blew Coxy out of the window. He went down, fell three stories, landed on the ground just down here. Uh, and I didn't know what happened to him, I never saw him again, until six months after the war, I met him in a pub in Whitney in my hometown. He was against the bar, and so of course that made a, made a good night out for both of us. <laughs> that, was a, that was one incident that happened here.